I'm May Potter and we are at the lovely Lindome Lakes today. We're on the Thursday Open. I have drawn peg 17 on laurels. We've got here today. The peg looks lovely to be honest with you. So my attack today is a little bit of everything. So I'm going to start short on maggots and start priming my long lines. My, I'll ping some pellets long. I will feed a waggler line and a bomb line out because there's some carp cruising so there might be a bit of a flicking a waggler at them and then um, hopefully snarl a few late short as well and down the edge I've got a nice lovely pallet to fish to as well so let's see how we get on. It's nearly all in, um, just looking around my swim there's a lot going on like them days where you get to your peg and you think what am I actually going to start on with that is today this is going to be one of those days I think. Um, I'm going to start short. I was thinking about chucking a chucking a pellet out near the island because there's quite a few fish uh, mooching around. But I'm going to start short because you can snarl a few quick fish short and just work my way out. Hopefully that'll work. You know, I might not get a fish short and then I can pick my waggler up straight out. I'm going to still fish my shallow line and feed it because I think if I do catch on the waggler or on the bomb out there, sometimes you need to rest it. So feeding and priming a line, even if you go on for it like for 20 minutes, 15 minutes, that's enough time to rest you of a line and hopefully put a few fish in the net to, to then go back out. And all, you might actually even find out that you catch quicker um, on, your, on your pole shallow line, it, that noise, it's a plane, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, there's just a plane, uh, there's an airfield across the road from here. Right, so yeah, fishing, um, yeah. So you might think, well, you're only, you're feeding that pole line for, for a lot, like most of the match, but you're only dropping on it for like 15 minutes. But that 15 minutes might be foot rest at match, so you just don't know. So it's definitely worth, worth uh, feeding it throughout. So let's, Hopefully. Shall I shout? Time! At least I've not blanked. Right. So up the feed a little. Try and get through them smaller fish. I'm flicking my rig out past my bait and letting it lower and lowering my float dead slow, just so you're making your up bait look as natural as possible. And plus the, the good side of fishing short, you can always keep an eye out on what everyone else is doing, seeing who's, who's catching, where everyone else has started fishing.
floats dancing about a bit. So there are fish down there, whether they're them small peckers or whether there's some them better F1s down there. I can see they're on a, that long waggler line, the carp are still cruising about. So we'll give this a few more minutes and then we'll um, we'll start we'll pick up the catty, start feeding my shallow line, my pole shallow line at 30 meters, and then um, I think I'm going to chuck the waggler out because there's quite a few carp cruising about out there. But I'm still going to feed this short line because it'll be Again, later on, we might need to rest rest other lines and if we keep priming it, we know that we might still put a few fish in the net. They're swirling. Cut that one as I flick my rig out. I'm gonna. I'm feeding live maggots, but I'm gonna actually put a dead maggot on the hook. The reason for this is your dead maggot, it falls through the water slower. Oh, I'm in a tangle. We're back. Right. Flick your rig out. Hold your float so it's just, as you see, just out. And then as your line sinks, lower that rig down. Hopefully, your upbait should be falling through all that feed. Um, when you when I'm feeding, there's a lot of movement, the swirling. I feel like th there are some better stamp fish there, but they're just not getting chance to get to the bait before them littler fish are getting to it. So I'm thinking potentially coming off this line, still feeding it, and chucking out there. There's swirls all over my peg. I don't like these days, you know, when you get to your peg and there's, there's fish all over and you think, oh God, what, it's solid, what am I going to do? 
I like it better when you can't see them and you just you get to fish and instead of like chasing the fish about. One more drop on this. And then I'm gonna lob the uh, pellet waggler out because there's some fins out there. Tiny little dink there. Oh, I can hear someone's drag. Someone's in. That's it, I've had 10 minutes on that. I'm going to still feed it though. There's a lot of fish out there moving about. And for once, it ain't blowing a gale, and it's actually quite nice. You get your waggler in and tighten up. Twitching it a little as well. I'm feeding sixes and I've got a six on the hook at the minute because I feel like you kind of, you're not, you're not, you, if you've got a six on, then you, you're not sort of like F1s will, will struggle to get an eight mil. They will get an eight mil in the gob, but um, it's a lot easier for them to. Get this, get a six in. little knot there. Not fast and furious for anyone at the minute. Oh, one just came up just just where my pellet landed. Is there still? Well, a little, a little bit further. Do 
twitch. Oh, sir. Come on, a little bit further. Raining. Oh. Uh, right. So I've come off that pellet line because they're just not confident enough. I'm going to still feed it though and just come on this short line because I reckon I'll catch on this. But I'm also thinking. Should have possibly put an heavier float on, an heavier rig on, just so you can get your. Because at the minute I'm fishing a 412s, so it's falling real slow. But sometimes the the like that. But sometimes also, when you've got that many fish there, you want to get your hook bait through, through, through them littler fish first, so you can get to them better stamp. Still moving about. Thing is, don't get like, don't start a match and think, oh, I've not had out yet, it's going to be rubbish. You need to like think, right, yeah, it's not fast at the minute, but it will, the, the, they'll decide to have, have a chew, so just keep trying to top up all your other lines. You on that pole line. Show him. Yeah. Oh, there's an eruption in front.
time are we on? Right. I'm going to chuck a bomb over where I've been feeding. Because I still don't think I'll catch one and waggle it. Maggot's been chewed too well by them little and we'll keep feeding short line. Red on, something to stand out you know, when they're f chewing on the pellets, or that you, f you feed pellets. That little red pellet will just stand out a little bit more, and hopefully, you'll get a quicker bite. Oh, coming up to say hello, that one. Fish moving about. Swam through my line, that one. Oh, he's a great bigger than that. Your right whale, like that. Swimming towards me. Oh, a right tail came up out there. Feel, I'm seeing a lot of tails as if like they're not really feeding shallow they're all it's as if like they're sort of like coming up and then sort of like going down to feed that's what I think anyway because otherwise them first couple of chucks on a waggler would have, would have nailed one straight away Ten inch up length on at the minute, but it's like there's a lot of this going on, which is making me think that that ten inches is a little too long, and I want to take a little bit off. Why is it too long? Because I think it's giving them too much, it giving them enough light, like. Say you're a fish, then you come in, you've got hold of my pellet now, you can, you've got like 10 inches of line to swim around and have, and where like, if you've got a short rock length, like say if I take like another two inches off and do an eight inch, that two inches less is, might be enough to, for them to up themselves, like to be upped instead of like not, not having spare, spare line to swim around with, or like have the chance to like spit it out Three and a half minutes out there, chuck it back over the feed. But also, sometimes having a short rock length, they might want, you might need to put a longer rock length on. 
to, because they might be sat watching your pellet fall and they might want a, a slower falling pellet. So you can shorten it, but then some days you can put in a, a, a new little clamp on a longer one on. on. Oh, it's off. I think that might have been up round the face. Oh, it's <laughs> Try again, shall we? Old faithful Robin Red. Got an eight mil robin red on, by the way. Quite, it's a small eight mil, though. As in, like a shorter barreled eight mil, not like a long eight mil. Oh, look at him taking Mick out of me. That was a whale, wasn't it? We'll have him on in a Don't think that's him, but I think I've got his mate. Right, that hook length. Yeah, I got bust off with the first bite, with the first pull, but put another hook length on. Same hook, T911X, size 16, um, but I've, I've gone over 18 line but I've, I went t two inches shorter because you, earlier I was getting them little knocks all the time as if like they were <laughs> like spitting your pellet out constantly where and like or swimming around or like just just playing around with it where that two inches seems you, 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 we didn't get any of that we got like a one little touch and then it just went that's what you want Not massive, but it'll do for now. We've upped the feed a little as well. Just because if you think, a cat, they can eat a fair bit. And if, it, if there's a few of them in there, you don't want like one of them, a little F1 that. Uh, you don't want... Oh, see if he comes back up. Right. 
then again a smaller barrel 8 mil robin red again on up to ring the dinner bell chuck in get the trap set and then just add a line of that as I've chucked in so And then you'll notice when I chuck in that I'm using stopwatch. I just like to use a stopwatch just because it gives you an idea of like how fast your bites are. Because some days you could be fishing and your bites will be like six, seven minutes, eight minutes worse. And then other days you can be fishing in. The, well, that bite was probably maybe a minute and a half. Also, if you use a stopwatch and say you've, you've chucked it out and, it, and all your bites have been between a minute and a half and three and a half minutes, you know you've chucked out that you need to chuck it out again. Um, so first hour's gone, it's been a bit slow, um, there's not been that much caught, but uh, I think they're just, they're just not ready to eat yet, so the, the, I reckon it'll just be slow, put a few fish in there and then um, it'll be better it like a bit of a race towards the end um, so I'm just going to try and mug this cat I looked at it it's gone come back in uh, in a bit when we've got a bit more to report not sure not sure how big this fish is. Caught on the eight inch hook length. I was just thinking about putting a longer hook length on. Oh, he's off. Come back. Oh, Jesus. Just over there, the island. Probably trying to try and get him away. Oh, he's off. He's off down. Turn around now. Might be a big fish, this. Or just a really angry small one. Oh. Chuff. Give me a recap of the first hour and a half. Right, so, first hour didn't didn't start off as fast as I thought it would, to be honest with you. But I think that was the same for everyone. So like, I upped my feed even more to try and make more noise, trying to ring the dinner bell louder than anyone else. And then when I've noticed that the, the, they've come, come in, there's a few fish there, I've just cut back a touch with the feed. Still feeding quite a bit, but not nowhere near as much as I was. 
because you don't want to feed too much where that it's 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 taking them too long to find your your up bait. Oh. I hope this is a big fish, otherwise I'm going to look right silly, aren't I? Oh, he's gone through my line. Just under that duck. I just can't do anything with him. He's just... Yeah, I could start put, put, making drag stronger and pulling hard, but I don't think it's going to be a fish race at the minute, so we've just got to make it all count. Round because I know there's a few snags down edge there. I don't want him sneaking into them. Is um it's not moving much, it's just plodding about, so I think this is a carp. Trying to... I don't really want him going on another run, because if he goes out there again, he's going to end up going through my swim, and then that time, sort of like feeding and prepping and, and making sure that you topping it up, it'll, it'll end up scaring a few of them off. It's coming in now. Let's see if we can... Oh, hang on. No. I reckon he's ready to come in. Famous last words. Might be that hippo that we saw earlier waving at us. Still not. Can't quite see him yet. Just in front. He's going to turn round. Oh, here we go. Is he coming this way? Yep. Yeah. Right, we've got him swimming right way. Bring it a bit closer and we can lift him. Oh, he's not that big. Is he? So, oh, there's an angry common. Right. So, 
again. Paint mill bobbing red. Just check your clip. not happy always come back in chuck it out again no point in thinking oh am i in a tangle just don't edge it feed that leave it there for three minutes and see I reckon I've probably got maybe nine pound at minute. Um, the chap to my left, I reckon he's probably got maybe 12, 15 pound. The guy over on the early numbers, I've not really seen him catch and then the other guys I can't see at all, sort of like behind islands. So I don't, we're 12, 10 past 12 now, so I reckon probably if we aim to catch 90 pound, I reckon that'll be a good, good weight today. But we might, they might all of a sudden start having a chew. So that 90 pound could end up being like 130. You just don't know. I'm feeding my maggot short with catapult because it makes more noise when they go in. Fish Got another one. Nearly three minutes that one. It's a little left one this. Normal pellet on. Feed. 
them ducks there, I don't think they make much of a difference when you're fishing because the fish are going to feed more confidently because they're going to think, well, ducks won't sit there. Who's right, that? Plus, they're basically a floating feature in your peg, aren't they? Ten just over where you've got ten. Feed your other lines. It's gone very flat and quiet. I think I've. Uh, I'm not sure. I just think it's lunchtime. Just, I just think they've just decided to have a chew because they've been in my peg earlier. They've been in my peg. But like now, it's it's gone flat calm and there isn't that many sort of cruising about like there were before. Yeah, there's the odd one topping and stuff, but they're not cruising. It's as if like. They're sort of like having a chew now. And plus, if you think we've, I've fed quite like ten, ten, ten pellets and. I think if, if one fish comes in and starts having something to eat, his mate comes in and says, oh, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. And then his mate comes in and then all of a sudden you've got full full gang there. But but with, with, with them all there, they're having to compete because it's still only 10 and 10 and 10 pellets going in. Just a little F1. Angry. Oh no, he's a little, little cat. Chunky little cat. It's like a little bonsai cat. That was on a normal pellet as well, that were on a robin red. So let's see. You might sometimes having a standout update don't ain't always the best thing. Sometimes I want something that just blends in. Right, I've come shallow. Probably maybe like five minutes or something, maybe a bit longer. And I've had three nice F1s, just picking pellets of her. And I have a and um it's about two and a half foot deep jigger bouncing it sort of like from foot and a half to two foot. I'm not sure if this one's up properly because it's going a bit wild. Let's come back.
coming back slowly like this gives you opportunity to ping and feed them other Ready at all. Let's come back. Next door, catching well as well. They get one in armpit. again. The good thing about feeding pellet shower is when that wind does get up you can get your bait out there. Right. Just a four mil fish with pellet on it band. Remember, I came off that line to rest it whilst I can shallow, though. Remember. Stop. And then bounce it. And feed. Don't take my jigger out, just sort of like lift it from a bait fall in with the rest of the pellets. Also, um, on the shallow line, if you stop catching on it, get him out, get him out with your swim. Like that. If you stop catching on this line, you can always chuck like your bomb, bomb out under your shallow line, or under armor method on it. Not my 
left wall. Fish repellent unbound. Pretty back shallow line. Bomb line. Oh, fish on that bomb line. I'm scared to like slap your jigger and just hold it. You what? So, you'll ke keep hearing me say that, like, make sure you keep topping everything up, keep topping it up. These, F I've left it, what, two hours, over two, like, two and a half hours maybe, until I've actually gone on it. But that two and a half hours, then fish have, like, been feeding on it and they've fed really confidently. So you can go on it now and start catching and they're competing really confident that they'll stay there now for like, hopefully for the rest of the match. Because they're not a bad size F1. And yeah, I could use a fixed rig, but sometimes a jigger, especially like F1s, I like to sort of sit back and just watch. Oh, missed it. Swam out. Try again. Then again, fish repellent. Next door's catching, canoe splashing about. Don't forget, feed your lines. Because they could be the lines that you go on to, to rest this line when this line goes.
try and get your fish away from you, where you're fishing shallow, just because them other fish are feeding confidently, so you don't want that one splashing around making a scene. Hell, it is a big F1. Chuff. Put a saddle in him, round him. Oh, steady. Thinking, there's a few there now. What? It's not solid, solid yet. But I reckon we've just got to keep an eye on the time. to uh, feed my margin.
three hours stay, mate. Right? Just tell them in a minute. Right. We've got two hours left. This is, what, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm going to do, and hopefully we can carry on snare in the mirror or what the plan is. Okay. Two hours left of the match, and the, the shallow lines, it's pretty quick for fish. We're not having to wait long. Um, but there's, it look, I'd like to have another drop on my bomb line because generally they were a bit bigger fish. But you're having to wait for them. So if this line keeps going and producing quick bites, then it, it's worth, well, you never come off feeding fish. That's what I've always been taught. But I need to top up, give a, put a bit of bait down my margin in the next sort of 20 minutes or something. Because it's worth going down there because you can put a good weight together quick because the stamper fish will be big, better. But these, the stamper, the F1's on the shallow line, ain't bad. So if I'm catching fast like this, I just I, I would just stay, most likely stay on this, but I'm still going to feed, still going to feed the margin. Just under two hours left and I'm thinking I, I wanted to be going down my edge to be honest with you but I'm putting fish in the net and I'm catching them quite fast so I've always been taught don't come off feeding fish and I'm gonna yeah, I'm still, you'll see, I'm still pinging pellets on my bomb line, uh, chucking maggots short, and I'm actually like feeding a few pellets down the edge just to prime it, just in case if I do go on it. But at the moment, I think this line's too strong to come off it. Especially because everyone's getting a few bites now. So, I reckon strong chance of just staying on this line to the end. If it keeps producing fish for me. it was really fast this line but they've just backed off a bit but I have caught probably six really shallow when I say really shallow I mean like three inches deep under the surface shallow yeah they're swimming out my peg but they're still going to disturb the rest of them but you'll see that I'm like Smacking the jigger 
couple of times. And then holding it high. Because them fish are really high. You'll see around the float, you see them swirling. Last time I lowered my jigger right low, I actually foul up one. So, I reckon. Slow down now. Anyone's caught. I'm feeding quite a few as well. Before I was only feeding like maybe sort of 10, probably feeding like 15 to 20 pellets. Because there's that many fish there, they're just competing for that bait. That's what you want. Especially when everyone else is putting a few fish in there. Just in the chin. really slowed down now. Said that as I've just upped one. I think we've gone a bit deeper. Maybe there's not as many fish in my peg and that amount of bait that I've been feeding is pushing down a bit. Not as big as the earlier fish on, on this line, but there's still fish in the net. back on feed that time so we've had to come up a little to compete for the bait it's not it's not low going in like I was before just adjusting things a touch I'm shortening this line because every time I'm there messing about, uh, shortening the elastic because every time I'm pulling it back, that's like 
five seconds, and that five seconds adds up to another fish. Really shallow, you can see them. It's done up water. Watch them all swirl. Look at them. another like, half a section out there's a few of the bigger f1 swirling there we go they've backed off a bit i'll still feed where i was feeding though because if i start feeding where they've backed off to, then they'll back off again. And then you've got to put them up a section on. You want to try and keep them as close as you can to try and catch them as fast. Yeah, better stamp that one. I'm just going to after the X section further out. Same again. It's slowed really. It slowed down now. Um, look like they've backed off a bit more, but this fish are like round where I'm, where I'm feeding. You feed. There we go. I don't know whether this one might be foul locked. And it's going. Let's go back for some more pellets. Come on, get that. Sometimes you just can't avoid it. Yeah, this one's foul locked. Possibly. Right. We'll have one more go out there and then I might I'll either have a chuck on my bomb line or drop down on my margin.
really angry, aren't they? back out on that line, still feed. Definitely not as fast on the shallow line as it was. There's fish still there though. That's the thing. There is fish on this still. Bites are slower, but the fish are bigger. I think them littler fish have like backed off a bit, and then bigger, older, wiser F ones have like come in. I think I'm going to go down the edge. Yeah. I'm going to have one more fish on this. Hopefully, there we go. 
and then I'm going to get this in and hopefully I'm going to feed it but because it's a slow I'm going to actually come off it and just have a quick look down the edge because I've been feeding it so I'm still going to feed my shallow line though so then if I don't get a fish on my edge line I can go straight back on it and start catching again so I'll come back in a bit and see how we're getting on What do you do? You've caught a big F1 and then I'm going. I've decided I'm going down edge. Right, I'm going down the edge now. That shallow line really slowed down. Very really got the bang. movement down there. Just fed a falls. I've got like a short barreled six on hook. Oh, oh slight touch there. Wait for it to go. Got to remember when these big fish come in. One waft at tail and do need to feed my shallow line but I reckon that float's going to go in a minute now so I'm going to concentrate on that. Reckon any second now that's going to go. I was actually just coming back to put another shot on. So this could possibly be foul up. See if we get it in. We've got a C911X on, so. I think it's in gob, this.
mouth. Mm. All right, so we've gone back on the shallow line. We did try the margin. We had one fish, gone back on it. It was just too slow. I'm looking around, everyone else is putting fish in the net. Um, so I, uh, whilst I was still fishing the margin though, I was still feeding the shallow line um, throughout. So the fish would stay there and just, just so that they'd come back because they'd backed off a little bit. I did um, have a quick chuck on my bomb line as well. I had a, a liner, that was it. So I've come back, back onto this, this um, pellet line, this shallow line and we've had one straight away. So I've, we've got, I only got like 40 minutes left at match. So my theory is I'm just gonna stay, stay on this line and just keep ticking over. And hopefully it'll be enough. Catapult. Same again, just fishery pellet on the hook, feeding pellet straight out of the bag. Probably feeding about 10 at a time. gone back on this long line and um, it's safe to say the, the back again still a little bit wary to catch but I uh, looking around as long as I keep putting fish in the net towards the end of the match that is the key so I reckon this is where I'm going to stay on for the rest of the match now till the end fingers crossed you snarl a few of them original big gnarly F1s soon. One. Right, Ippo. Size of him. Oh, good. It was good that netting me cat, catty and then fish.
So when I'm shower fishing, I like to use one of the Drennan swivel stop beads directly onto my elastic. You just pull it over a knot. I just feel that you, you're really direct and you're fishing. And, it, and you're able to hit your bites a bit better than using a Dacron. not as fast as it was but they do seem to be a better stamp so I don't mind Definitely steadier, but no one's catching really fast, so I'm not really panicking. I'm not sure whether I've caught as much as the chap on the end peg over there, but we'll see. Definitely chunkier F1s and the ones you want to be catching. noticed I've come back as well like to where I was originally fishing shallow because I'd gone out half a meter earlier I've come back on the 30 meter mark where I was feeding them originally and that's where I'm catching them now so hopefully I don't have to go out any further A bit deeper now. Instead of catching them at like three to six inches deep, we're catching them probably two foot, two and a half foot.
Oh, missed him. Everyone seems to be fishing shallow at one point today. Laggy out now. Oh, lost it. Definitely foul up that end. Check the oak. I'm not going to feed this time, I'm just going to go straight out and smash. Fed. So. Caught right on, stop that. Feels are there. Feels from this. Oh. Is that? Oh no, my bead slips. Oh, knocked on the bar. Oh, if I get this in. All that. <clears throat>
How long have we got left, Gary? thinking I'm definitely going to just stay on this now not I'm going to just I've stopped feeding my other lines now try and concentrate on this line stay on this line I did think about having another quick look down the margin, but I'm going to stay here, I think. It's fish here. Feels like a bit of a better fish again. Get him and try and snaffle two more. Maybe three more. I don't know how long we've got left. Food. Caught that one just as I'm dropping the jigger 
to the stop. Feels a better fish again. Pull two out and then want to make, make them all count. Ten minutes. Slow this. Oh. There's definitely fish there, they're just, just not competing as much as earlier. As you can tell when you're feeding your bait, you're not seeing them come for it. I've cut I think they've just backed off a bit more, because we've caught quite a few on it. And the last couple of ones have been bigger and they've, they've not really swum straight out of the swim. They've like swum round and like shouted at the mates like, ah, get out. Like this one has. Back 
like that again. I'm not going to feed until I'm back out, just because it lasts 10 minutes. Definitely slowed down now. I think this one's up properly. Three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Snaffle another one before all oh, that. Uh, oh, Looks like it's been off. Catch another one. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's get this one out. Catch another one. That'd be nice. Oh. Even better when they're not themselves. Mm. Oh,
Um, we might get another one. Get this one in first. I've weighed in 150 pound. I'm happy with that. I've been second with that, but I think my peg was worth more. I, I think I could have had 200, which has won the match. I think I spent a bit too long on my lines, trying to make them work a little bit. I should have just kept swapping and rotating and changing. Like my, to, I don't regret starting short because it gave me a chance to have a look around because it's always good for a few good fish. If, they, if they're there, you can get like 10 F1s straight away, skimmers and stuff, but they just weren't there. So I've gone on my bomb line. I've, well, chucked a waggler out first. I think I should have probably chucked a bomb out first. And I fed sixes, and I think I should have maybe have fed eights, just because one, they make a better noise, and two, I could have grouped it a little bit more because the wind's just been coming across a little. So like my bait's been, it's been all right, but it's been in a bigger area than I, were, I was happy with. So I would have changed that. And then, yeah, my, my shallow line, I think I should have gone on that sooner. If I'd have gone on that sooner and just rested it a few more times instead of trying to force fish off it. And then I would have gone down my edge as well soon. Like I'd have maybe fed it a bit earlier and gone down my edge because then I might have had like maybe three, four carp down there. And then with resting my shallow line, I'd, I'd have maybe have caught two, three, four more fish quicker. We're resting it just because they just backed off a little bit and then bigger fish, they, they just get shy. And so yeah, I reckon, I reckon I could have caught a little bit more today. Rigs wise, I've used a RW Maggie on my short line, four by 12. I did mention I should have maybe have had a four sixteens on bit heavier rig to get down through them littler fish to get to them better stamper fish. I should have maybe have done that, but I don't think they were there. I think maybe even like a little bit later on, because I kept feeding it, I kept seeing a few fish on it. I think maybe a light rig, real light, faffy, delicate rig, flicking it out past your pole and just letting that maggot fall as natural as possible with a really light rig, that that would have been possibly a good, good shout. Uh, my shallow line, when it was slow, I think maybe underarming a method on it would have worked. With 50-50 micros, ground bait, underarming a method on it, but still feeding shallow like I would be, because sometimes they just go down a little bit, and that, that underarming a method, you, you, you get them sort of like concentrated on that bit of feed, so you, 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 they come in a little bit closer and focus more on where you're feeding. So I think I could have done that as well. Uh, my bomb line, again, I think when I caught a few, chucking a method onto that as well, that would have worked. I should have, I had it set up, I just didn't pick it up. So I think that that's lost me a few fish as well. So that's a shame. Got uh, my shallow line, maybe going out another section, but then again, the, the, the came back to that 13 meter line when I was feeding it. So I don't think that was, that was um, 
anything I could have really changed. Maybe a slightly deeper jigger, because it was like a two and a half foot jigger, maybe a, a three and a half foot jigger, like we use on Loco and, and Benny's. I should have maybe popped one of them on. Um, but apart from that, my edge line, I used a little muddy and nice depth down there. I fed fours, um, maybe should have fed a few micros in it as well. Um, and possibly a bit of corn on the up instead, uh, just a pellet. But I did catch, I just don't think they were there. So obviously on to the next one and hopefully see you on the next one. See you later.